Welcome back to Fofessor, where a photography and Photoshop professor breaks down techniques and concepts that are utilized in Photoshop and photography today. There's a question I get all the time, and this is a, an image I just finished recently. Let me just show you real quick the, the original. And here's the original. This is from a senior picture session I had with a little gal named Sophia Martin. And uh, she happened to have a little pond on her property and with this old boat and I think the boat was I'm not even sure if it was seaworthy or not but uh, we put her in it anyway and I drug it to the shore a little or off out of the murky mud as much as I could but you can still still see those little bits of like seaweed and stuff and I don't even know if this is murky swamp mud or not um, I think it was so it was really really muddy and I wanted to crop out the mud because I didn't think that looked nearly as good so when I shot it, I didn't include any of that, but I still had some fringes down here. And actually, the time of day was good on her face and the light was really soft. But back in here, I had some highlights uh, that I didn't really like and some distracting elements. Pretty much, I didn't want the pond to look muddy and murky and swampy. And I wanted to look a little more uh, romantic and um, fantasy-like. So I'm going to walk you through some of the steps I did to change this... Uh, this image into this what you're looking at now and it boils down to the number one effect I did is I let's check some of these off real quick and you can see I'll back it out and you can see what I did so the number one thing I did going forward was I there's a little piece of land up here and I thought that this area looked blank and didn't have enough anything in it. Um, it turns out in the final crop, I actually cropped that out any, anyway. But you can see here, there's an element I took there. And all I did to get that was I took the lasso tool, grabbed it really, really sketchily, as you can see, and just made sure it was feathered a little bit. I hit Command J. Make sure I'm on the background layer. I hit Command J. And I got, as you can see, my the layer of it there. And I just took it from over here. I hit Command T for transform. I, I hit Control and left clicked. And then I flipped this horizontal so it was like that. And then I moved it up in here over this one and situated it in there. Hit return. And then I just added a mask down here to it. And with black, because it's a white mask, I used a paintbrush. It was really super soft, and I just sort of blended the edge out, as you can sort of see. And that's how I got that little piece over there, okay? So there's that piece. Now the second thing I did, and this is something that people do all the time, when they don't like the color of her dress, when they don't like the color of something, they just simply select it with whatever selection technique you feel most comfortable with. Oftentimes, I use uh, the lasso tool, and they simply select it and then shift the hue and saturation. So if you look here on her dress, it's a little more deeper blue than it normally than it than it rendered in the camera. And that's because I went through and selected the dress. And then I shifted the hue a little bit and added some saturation. So if you look back, this is what it normally looked like. And now, if I add some saturation to it, it looks a little deeper, and I shifted the hue just a little bit. Okay? So, and you're probably wondering, well, how did you select the whole thing and then just affect just that? And what that is, is this mask right here. And what, the, what I did with the mask is I went down, I selected, I selected her dress. After I selected the dress, I masked it, and then I inverted that mask and filled it with black. Meaning, it's not a white mask like this, where, um, where the whole scene is affected, and you just basically mask, hide the part you don't want to see with black. This, um, you cover this, right, with black. Think black is like black plastic, and you cover this adjustment I made. So if we don't look at this, let's look at the ones that's a little easier to see. Like, if we don't even look at this, 
if we don't even look at this part right here, you'll see that that's what it looked like, right? I did this whole adjustment, and you'd be like, wow, that looks really awful. She's red. Everything is red. That looks sort of gross. And you're totally right, it does. Um, but when I, was, when I was adjusting this, I was using this uh, hue slider and going back and forth to see what I liked, right? And it turns out I like this hue, but not for everything. I wanted it just for these little flecks of, of stuff in her boat, right? So if you'll notice, I masked everything out, or I blacked it all out, and then with white, I painted these back in. Okay, so there's two different ways you use a mask. Either you cover it with black in whatever you want to show through, the adjustment that you want to show through, you paint with white, or you make a white mask and whatever you want to hide, you paint with black. But this is just a hue saturation layer, as you can see up here. And I got that down here in my, in my adjustment panel with hue saturation. I got it from here, clicked on it, and it made the little adjustment, this, and I just went and added and played with stuff and play with it until I like the color. So the boat, um, what I did here on this on this selection, you could see that I made the entire thing sort of blue with this hue saturation shift up here again. And it's really drastic, minus 180, plus 13, minus 18, I made it darker um, on the lightness. And you can see that it was a white mask, so I applied it to the entire scene and then, where I didn't want it to cover, I took a black paintbrush and painted black and, and painted her out. And you can see it right there. The next thing I did is this is a lot of finishing move for a lot of compositors. Is I put a little gold, I drew a yellow square, which is down here in your, your, in your tools palette. You can get the rectangle tool. And I just filled it with sort of an orange color. And I drew that square over the top of the whole image. Right, And then what I did is I set the blend mode to pin light because I was going through the blend modes and I thought that looked sort of interesting right there. And I just dropped the opacity of it like that. Now, when you go through blend modes, whenever you drop something on top or any texture or anything, when you go through blend modes, it's important not to come up here and tab through them. The fast way to go through your blend modes to check and see which one works really well is to make sure you're on the Move tool, which is up here. And you can do that by hitting the V key, and it goes right to the Move tool, right there, up on top of my taskbar. Hold Shift down, and if you scroll through, you can scroll through all those blend modes really fast. By, up by your Delete key, there's a Minus and Plus key. Hold Shift down, and just start hitting your Plus and Minus key, and you'll start going through these. And you could sort of settle on it. It's visually way faster to see this stuff and see how things look. And that's what I settled on. I settled on this pin light, this sort of golden look. And I didn't want it to, I didn't really want it to um, be so drastic. So I dropped the opacity of it, as you can see on this layer right here. Okay. I dropped the opacity of it. It's 34% opacity and it's pin light. And then you'll see this little tiny little blob of a little, what looks like a little figure. That's because I hit her with it just a little bit because I, I thought she looked too yellow. And then you'll see this black blackness out here around the mask. And that's where I actually took the gold off of some of the blue because I wanted the blue to show through more. Okay, so I'm removing, again, with a white mask, if you paint black on it, you hide this. You hide this gold effect. So I didn't want the gold effect on the blue. So with a black mask or a black brush on my white mask, I was hiding it on the edge. Okay. So that's sort of a workup of the layers I did to get here. Um, and then I desaturated it a little bit because I thought it was too, a little bit too bright. And what I did here is I went and I think I desaturated the blues. I did. I went down and desaturated the blues. That's another thing about hue saturation is not only can you shift the hue and change the color of the item you select, you can also drop the saturation of it. And you can also change the lightness or darkness of it. If you look at, let's see, let's go back to this blue area. If you look at this area here, let's do this one. If you look at this area here where I've got the, the um, some of this 
uh, stuff out here, this stuff out here selected, where everything's selected except for the boat. You'll notice that when I start pushing on this, everything except for the boat gets darker or lighter, right? She's there, and I can wipe the stuff out or make it darker or lighter. I can also increase or decrease the saturation of this that that area, so I can make it almost like gray, or I can bring it up and make it super super bright, where it just starts to fall apart because I've just I'm pushing it beyond its limits. Or I can change the hue of that whole thing also. And you'll see, just by doing this little thing, you can get a vastly different look than what you had before, just by shifting colors. So colors and changing the colors, especially when the person or the model or whatever didn't dress or wear the right clothing or the clothing you like, um, it's really, really super helpful. Now you'll see it in this dress, I can change this dress to different colors, watch. And each different color I change it to, let's drop the saturation of it a little bit. Each different color I change it to has a slightly different feel and mood, right? And that's because I've selected the dress and now I can work with it independently. I could even made it pink. Actually, and you'll see down here, watch this. Look at this janky stuff. Oh my God. You can see down here that because it's pink, it shows up all the places I did not mask it out, right? Like in here and stuff. So, yeah, I'd have had to, I'd have had to come in here and mask this out and really, really be super careful. And brush. Let's make sure my pass is 100%. And I'd had to come in here like this, right? And with black, I'd have to hide this extra because that green on her skin is not right. That is nasty. I'd have to come in here and take all this off, right? Super, super careful. Because you do not want green skin. Green, oh shoot. And see, I went back here and messed up. Green skin is like lizard or evil or sick or ominous or gross. Yeah, thanks. Think of um, the Wicked Witch. I don't know if it's the West or North or East. I can't even remember. She's a Wicked Witch, though. And the Wizard of Oz had green skin. Yeah, we're not going that route with Sophia. So, yeah. So we're getting a little more, a little more careful with our, with our masking, right? So that's what would happen if I turned it pink. I think that looks sort of cool, too. Dang it, I should have left it like that. I might, I, might, I might have another version. I actually sort of like this pink now. Dang, man. See what happens when you, like, start messing with something? Sometimes you can mess with stuff and like for days and then just go, oh my God, um, I actually don't like any of my edits. I just like the original. Pfft. And all that time you were trying to spend like editing and being clever and changing stuff, um, <laughs> just in the freaking garbage can. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to leave this pink. Dang it to heck. Which means I'm going to have to come in here and really mask, really be c careful on this stuff and mask this stuff out and not hit any blue, which you can see down here. It's going to require some like fine fine selections on, in my, on my part with a soft brush and making sure none of this stuff stays green. So yeah. But you get the idea on how to change hue and saturation, okay? How to change like clothing and stuff from the original. Just make a selection of it and then use hue saturation and shift the color. You can shift the hue of any color you have. It's why I'm, I never worry so much when people bring uh, colors and stuff because I know, I wonder if I should take the pink out of here and make her hair normal. No, I like her with pink hair. Yeah, we're gonna leave it like that. I like this one next. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna play with this one after a bit. Nope, white mess. Make sure I get this stuff out of here. And I got some blue to work with in here too, which I don't particularly like. Freaking green, dude. That green is just awful. And then you don't want this tiny line here. It just looks really sketch and bad. So you want to take that off. You just don't want green. In fact, I'd rather have pink on it. Mm. I'd rather have pink on her skin than green. Because pink at least looks like a skin tone. 
you know, skin tones are red and yellow. Um, pink or green. Oh, yikes. Green doesn't look like anything. It looks like, again, Wicked Witch. So, I'm going to have to freaking mask the heck out of this. And get it pink, because I really do like the pink now. I think that looks awesome. So, yeah, that's basically how you do it, you guys. That's how, that's what, that's what this image looked like um, in the beginning. And you could see that this was the beginning. And then after all this stuff I added, it's going to look like that. Okay. So quick, easy fix for your images, um, unless you just pick some really hard stuff to mask, like hair and things. But in terms of adjusting the overall hue or um, saturation of stuff, the hue saturations adjustment is one of my favorite. So make sure you follow and subscribe. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll get back to them. Or I will make a, a video that just uh, illustrates and um, touches on some of the stuff that you guys want to hear. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.